morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Ethan, and I'm the designer for Flipwalk, which is an assistive bed rotation device for non-ambulant patients. So how does this uh, idea came about is that I understand that every mobile patient requires bed movement every one to two hours during sleep. And this is a common movement that we do at night when we toss our bodies. And this will help prevent uh, bed sores and pulmonary infections in, in people. However, for non-ambulant patients, uh, the caregivers do, do it for them. And this is very tedious because they have to wake up every 8 to 10 times a night to do this movement for them. So, as we also ask, like, what is the current solutions out there that is available for them? So look to the left. Uh, it is actually a whole bed design uh, that is mechanized. And from medical journals, it, it feedbacks that the whole experience is undesirable. Uh, it's expensive and it's bulky because it's like uh, using mechanisms to, to kind of toss the person's body around. So therefore, the design opportunities uh, opens for unsupervised uh, bed rotation for non-ambulant patients in a portable yet customizable solution. So then we look at uh, what is the market size of that. So in 2012, um, for pressure relief devices, it's already 2.9 billion. And because of aging and, and obesity on the rise, um, by 2019, uh, it, will, it will be uh, about 4.1 billion in size. So in US alone, 1.2 million people suffer from pressure ulcers and bed sores. And 70% 70 of these people are actually the elderly. So uh, what is Sleepport? Sleepport actually housed two airbags inside this uh, fabric housing. And uh, they, these airbags will be programmed by um, a pump assembly to inflate alternatively uh, on, on this time sequence. And you can actually program the, the uh, pump assembly to inflate accordingly to the user's needs. So we address four key aspects of the design, which is programmable, customizable, uh, affordable, and portable. So as we look into the details of the design, um, as I understand that not everyone has an even back uh, loading pressure. So for, for example, sclerosis, uh, people with a bent back, um, they, they might need some help with positioning the airbags accordingly to what they need. And to look to the right is how simple the assembly is. Uh, just a pump assembly on the top, uh, fabric housing, two airbags, and like arm cushions to prevent the, their hands from being caught between the their bags during the sequence. So how credible is this design? We, we always ask, like, it's not a concept. So I actually tested this product with three different individuals uh, from the extreme se severity of uh, this patient, which is the muscular dystrophy. And uh, on the face of uh, four weeks, uh, it's understand that uh, it has helped reduce like eight disrupted rests to two or less, two being like toilet breaks at night. So, which is quite good. So, how does this design impact the patients? So, we always ask, like, these patients don't want to be uh, dependent on their caretakers or, or people around them because they are already being affected by this illness. So, dynamic movement uh, would be when the air inflation leaks to its peak, it will pulsate to, to mimic like a breathing movement, so it will not be a static inflation. So it can be optimized for every individual according to their needs. And lastly, it's affordable to all. So then we looked at what are the aspects of novelty in, in this design. So the inflation sequence, like I said, the inflation uh, pulsation. And secondly would be the, the positioning of the airbags on, in this fabric housing. And lastly, because of this optimized size, it can be put onto a wheelchair to do wheelchair stretching <coughs> as well as on, on bed. So, so currently, uh, Freeport is in, in its basic model stage where it, it provides the adequate uh, amount of uh, bed rotation for the user and it's easy to use so it can be catered for the masses. And possibly uh, for an advanced model there will be smart sensors in, in, inside this device so it can learn about the user uh, through, through smart sensors like pressure sensors and it can be adaptable for different contexts like uh, in a clinical environment and as well as a home environment and lastly to, to optimize the design so then we look at this chart um, where is Sweetport place and 
uh, along its competitors. So on the top right, hey, on the top, it's all the competitors that is priced like ten thousand US dollars and above, and they are really static and big. And flip out on 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 contrast is something that is really priced at a very affordable price, like eight hundred dollars, and it's portable, programmable, and it can be adapted to wheelchair usage. So this is the route of uh, publicity that this product has been uh, exposed to. Like Singapore's newspaper has already published this project as uh, one of the innovations that uh, is notable for recently. And it, it has also been in the top 20 for James Tyson Award 2014. And uh, we have been speak speaking with like companies like uh, Philips and, and others like uh, even the local hospitals for, for active collaborations in the project. So we look at some, some of, um, like if we actually look at US alone, 1.7 million uh, amount of nursing home beds, uh, if we actually do a 5% penetration of the market, which is 85,000, and price at uh, 800 US dollars per, per product, it could actually reach uh, 68 million revenue. So yes, thank you. Good job. Thank you very much. I was just putting on my high tech science show one minute, so you did a great job to keep within the, uh, within the seven minutes. Uh, I think the idea, Ken, is that we have a 12 minute total, so if people finish a little early, you have a question. Right, I think that's fair. And I think we go to judges first for questions. Yeah, so judges first for questions, and then we can open it up to the rest of the audience if there are others. So, questions from our judges. Great presentation. Uh, you spoke a little bit about the other existing products uh, on the market. Can you uh, go back and give a little more depth into um, the products in your differentiator and how you protect your IP from, from them yeah. adapting? Uh, okay, so um, basically uh, what I understand from the other products and the papers that has already been filed would be, the, it's, it's like a, either it's mechanized, totally mechanisms like they can optimize maybe like 40, 45% of uh, rotation angle, uh, which is which is uh, in medical journals proven that it's not ideal because the patients need to go through therapy to to go on that treatment. So on the other hand, it's like um, it's not really bed rotation, but it's just air tubes that will will alternate the the pressure contact on the user. So after all, it's still uh, a novel design in a way. Thank you. And, and then judges, as you ask the questions, if you could just introduce yourself so they know who's speaking. Benjamin from uh, Orange. Hello, Benjamin I'm from Orange. So it's like a belt. Um, when it inflates, that does it help to move the legs or? Uh, OK. Um, because uh, like currently, this is a basic model. So we, what I work with is something of a, of a large scale. So I kind of scale it down to, to reach a uh, the minimum that the, the user needs for, for this basic model because like we are looking at the cost price of it and trying to cater it for the masses. And what I understand is like um, placing this product at the lower thoracic area that will leave up the, the heat bone from the contacts and subsequently because their head is rested on the on the pillow, it will be it will be lifting up slightly on, on the shoulders. So this is, uh, we have like a uh, physiotherapist that works with me for, for this product and it's proven that it's, uh, it's adequate for, for this usage. Great, I have a question here. And so Christine at Tideswell at UCSF, how are you addressing the issues around moisture from sweating or soiling? Okay, um, so like uh, the, the comfort of use is actually in, in the cushion itself, we're using um, uh, very soft cotton cotton fabrics to, of course it will, will not be really really comfortable like there's something below that they're resting on but um, as tested with the three, three testers for the weeks of uh, on, like for four weeks in, in the period um, they seem to be really really comfortable with this product like uh, they have not feedback about uh, having problems with like uh, rashes or or Uncomfort, uh, discomfort in, in the usage. So, yeah. Great. Uh, Matt McHugh from Fidelity Investments. Can you go uh, talk about talk about the improvement in the uh, 
the, the, the sleep, you said it was eight, eight times or something around the fact oh, okay. that. Okay. So yeah. yeah, this one. Um, just talk a little bit more about the, the actual results of the user testing and then also on the wheelchair utilization, do you think there's more of an opportunity potentially there short term? Okay, so, uh, so the testing uh, started out with something that's very raw, like what you see over on, on the top left is um, like an air pump getting gotten from a, a blood pressure meter. So the testing is being done uh, with these three users from the start to its end. So in total, there's like eight prototypes being built for, for to validate this result. And because we we don't have a qualitative kind of results for, for this, um, what we use as a measurement for the effectiveness is the identification of the bait source, the reduction of this uh, redness in the bait source, as well as the, the disrupted rest. So that's a, that's a comparison for us in this project. So which one is more important to the user? Is it the disruption of the sleep or the reduction in the sleep? Um, is, is their independence from their catheters because they are really very sensitive uh, and they need to be more independent. We have time for one more question or two very quick questions. Is, is there a weight limit? Um, what if, you know, if someone was really obese, would it still have the same impact? Okay, so the three, the three testers, uh, the three patients that I'm working with, uh, one is like 60 degrees, it's 60 kilograms, and uh, the, the, the most heaviest was like 120 kilograms. So it's working quite well. Of course, like uh, this is just a prototype at, at this stage, and we're looking at uh, finding the, the right equipments to, to build a, a, a really strong and, and robust uh, pro, uh, device for, for the users. Thanks, uh, Layla from Google, and here on behalf of World Economic Forum. I'm curious about the adjustability of the system, like sort of about the weight. Have you found that it's more of a one-size-fits-all kind of program, or is it something that would need to be fixed either by the user or by their physical therapist? Um, okay, so like fifteen if we, seconds. So if we, if we look at this, uh, it's mainly one-size-fits-all, and the airbags can be shifted accordingly, <coughs> and they can purchase bigger and wider airbags to be placed inside this housing. So in one way, it could be customized in, in terms of how they how, how much contact they would want on, on this product. Okay, great. Yeah.